Hi everybody, I'm Cadenza. Let's read Kaiju Noir, shall we? Uh, this is a visual novel developed and released in 2021 by a small team who I will be looking at right now. The project lead, the primary writer and developer, is one NB Kaiju. That's them right there. It also features music by Kitar Bard and art by these fine folks, as well as other things. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it's it's a noir mystery story, but also there are giant monsters in it. It's it's very straightforward in that case. You can uh, you can buy it right now on itch.io for six dollars or. If you happen to buy the Queer Games bundle that was released earlier this year at time of recording, then you already own this game, and I highly recommend you download it and read it for yourself. Uh, before we begin, I'm just going to go ahead and read this content warning. Content warnings. Kaiju Noir contains violence, blood, discussions of trauma, descriptions of death, and a non-violent drugging scene. And also, there's a lot of strong language. So if you're sensitive to these things, I would uh, proceed with caution. Having said all that, let us begin. Kaiju. Noun. From Japanese. 1. Strange creature. 2. Giant monster. 3. Dinosaur. 4. The unknowable creatures that dwell beneath the surface of the world. Feared. Hated. Misunderstood. New Monstropolis. A city of monsters, figuratively and literally. We giant beasts with dark hearts and darker souls trudge the streets of this stone world. A decade since the war ended, and we kaiju chose to isolate ourselves in this place below the surface instead of coexisting with humans. Their human culture pervades, however, seeping through the cracks and into every element of this underground existence. A life of tainted isolation or oblivion. Sometimes you have to make the difficult choices. Every night of your life. Kari. Every night another case. Every night another horror story from the city of monsters. Kari, are you awake? That's what you're here for. Making a living on the fringe of society. Closing the book on the stories that always end badly. Detective Karibara, you have a client. Hello. You startle from your nightly indulgence of self-loathing, the office around you the same as it was 20 minutes ago. Was this the life you expected when you began your career as a private investigator? Does this office make you feel like one of the charismatic PIs from the movies you watch every week? Bogman and Zagal, perhaps, in The Big Stomp? <laughs> it's a good poster. The walls, crumbling stonework, adorned with badly painted posters of those same films. Not squalor, but close. Your assistant, Elixirus, is looking at you in the bemused way he does every time he breaks you out of your daydreaming. What does he see when he looks at you? A broken down kaiju who just wants to be left alone? One of the silver screen hard-boiled untouchables? Or someone who just wants to make the city a little better. We'll go with this one for this playthrough. I encourage you to make your own choice when and or if you decide to read this on your own. Does it really matter? Perhaps. He always says that the way you see yourself changes your narrative. Whatever that means. Practically part of the same brood. Cracked your eggs together. Figuratively, at least. You both went your own ways on that journey, but were there through all the weirdness that followed. He always has that grin on his face when he rouses you, still putting up with your nonsense after all this time. Being the sole private eye in a city of monsters isn't exactly the glamorous life. A couple of cramped rooms for an office with the cheapest furniture that could be carved from a block of granite. Alex never complains, though. What is it? Alex has worked with you since you started the agency, a few years after the gates closed between the worlds, lured by the prospect of reliable pay and lurid intrigue. In the years that followed, you'd failed to provide either on a regular basis. Part assistant, 
part Taskmaster. He keeps the lights on, the tea strong, and your ego in check. Most of the time. You wish you could pay him more, or on time, but the City of Monsters rarely calls for the services of a private investigator. And there aren't a lot of folks beating down his door to hire a disabled veteran with more brains than a professor sandwich. What an analogy. <laughs> Are we open for new cases, or are you going to spend all night napping? What does the sign on the door say? Right now, it says, Keep your snout out of my business, fucker. But I'm pretty sure I can have that cleaned off by closing. That last case may not have ended happily for everyone, but it was an, it was an entertaining one. Maybe you should be the one scrubbing the door, then. Sounds like we're open, then. Can I get a tea? We're out of tea, and the petty cash box is empty. We do have a client, though. Fuck. You dig around in your pockets until you find some coins and hand them across the scarred desk. That's everything I've got. Send in the client and fetch something to wake me up, please. Alex snatches the cash and walks back into the front room of the office. He comes back a moment later with a nervous individual in tow. You wish you could say the kaiju Alex gently ushers into the, into the cramped office fills you with the confidence of a lucrative job offer, but they don't. They shuffle into the room, wings held tight against their body, a dozen tons of fur and muscle and strained nerves. They were scared. Couldn't blame them, though. Folks usually arrive at your door either terrified or furious, depending on what they needed investigated. The glance around the room possibly looking to escape, or for some telltale indication that they're in the right place. You don't know what a private investigator's office is supposed to look like, but this probably isn't it. Please, take a seat. They look nervously at the stool, as if only just noticing it, and sit down, wings held tight against their body. Thank you. There's a long pause in which you hear Alex quietly slip out the front door. You know, it often helps start conversation if we learn each other's names. I'll start. I'm Karibara. They or them, if you don't mind. This is my office, if says so on the door. Or usually does. You can call me Detective. I'm Maxra, Detective. Miss. She's well-spoken, for a kaiju, and wears enough gold to indicate a magpie-like tendency for the nicer things. That's a good start, Miss Maxra. Now how can I be of assistance? Another long pause as she fidgets with her rings. No doubt you'd like to discuss a matter of some delicacy, otherwise you wouldn't be in my office. She looks up and you see the fractured ice of her eyes. Cold, beautiful, and afraid. I need your help, detective. The words every private investigator loves to hear. The phrase somehow never growing old. Then you've come to the right place. I'm here to help, Miss Maxera, if I can. How can I be of assistance? I'm not the usual first point of call for kaiju in trouble. There's a police station just down the road. She looks down again, her claws clicking against each other as she rolls her rings nervously. Someone has some information about me that they shouldn't. Things I can't have get out to my family. That's why I can't go to the police. Blackmail? She nods. And you can't just pay them off? Not without asking my family for a lot of money, detective. And they would want to know what it was for. You nod back. Common enough story. One you've heard a dozen times before. No doubt an encounter with the wrong monster she doesn't want getting out. And can you tell me what they have on you? Something bad enough to get you in trouble with the family? With the police? She shakes her head vigorously, tears welling up in her eyes. I can't tell you that, detective. I've done things. Things that I'm ashamed of. And the less you know, the less danger you're in. You raise an eyebrow. Unusual addendum. The less I know, the harder it is for me to do my job, Miss Maxera. But I will respect your privacy, no extra charge. You scribble on your second last business card and slide it across the table. This is my retainer. I charge by the day, not the case. First day in advance. There may be expenses, especially since I'm going in without a lot of information. 
She picks up the card, glances at it, and nods without hesitation. I can tell you where the message said to go, and who to talk to. Is that enough to start you off? From the front room, you hear Alex return, his cane clicking against the stonework. That's a good start. Can you show me the message? It might give me something more to go on. No! I mean, no. Sorry. I don't have it with me. Fine. You can leave details with my assistant out front as well as the retainer. Anything you can tell me about them? About what they want? She stands, shaking her head and reaching for her bag. The blackmail demand only included the name and a place, so that I could find them when I was ready to pay. She leans across the desk, the light glinting on her jewelry and the cold blue of her eyes. I would like this to be handled quietly, detective. It would mean a lot to me, personally, if you could just make this all go away. There's obviously more she isn't telling you, but you aren't being paid to pry into her reasons. I'll do my best, Miss Maxra, but I'm not a bodyguard, or a hired thug. If you want someone disappeared, I'd recommend the police station down the road. Their rates are more than reasonable. I'm sure you'll do just fine, detective. And please, call me Max. You were doomed from the start. Chapter 1 Alex walks back into the room a few minutes later, mug in one hand and slip of paper tucked beneath an ear frill. Well, she was quite the character. Did she pay? He puts the cup neatly on the desk. The liquid inside is black as a lagoon at midnight and smells like molasses. And cash. Nice, crisp new bills all tucked up neatly in the cash box. By the bulge in her purse, there's plenty more in there. Can I get a new chair and claim it as a business expense? Mine is falling apart. Tempting. I wouldn't mind a new hat. Somehow keep shredding them. You have horns, Kari. You aren't supposed to be wearing hats. I know, but when was the last time you saw a detective movie without the P.I. wearing a hat? Good point, but I get my chair first. Deal. If we can get a few days out of this case, I'll not only get you a new chair, but pay you for the last two weeks. Alex shrugs and pulls the paper from his fin, placing it on the desktop. Do what you can, Kari. We're in this together. You deserve to get paid. I get my pension, not entirely helpless without you. I've seen how much they care about vets. Wouldn't trust a hatchling to survive on that pension. And yet, I scrape by just fine. Anyway, here's the details on the messenger and hangout. Former is unknown to me, though the police might have something. Latter is a dive off the main strip. Been there a few times. How are the drinks? Cheap and not entirely lethal. You pick up the slip of paper and scan Alex's meticulous lettering. Lorathrak. The Last Gulp. Crag Lane. She really is playing this one close to the scales. I couldn't get anything out of her. Not even a description. What the hell have you gotten us into? A case. Which is more than we had this morning, or yesterday, or last week. Alex leans against the doorway and taps his cane uncertainly. Just don't go wasting all the money on the movies and hats. You try not to laugh as you drink your tea. So what's the plan? Go scope out the place? Check with the cops? I know Carla Zora down at the station owes us a favor after last time. Uh, I'll let y'all ruminate on this while I get a drink real quick. Ugh, <sighs> been a while since I've done this whole narration business, but anyway. Uh... I'm gonna go ahead and not associate with the cops if I can help it. I'd rather not deal with the cops any more than I have to. They gave me a license to do this, doesn't mean they like me doing it. Corrupt assholes. Can't believe they make you pay to do their jobs for them. Someone has to pay for all those donuts. You mean the bribes, protection money, and selling stolen evidence aren't enough? How many donuts does one kaiju need? Don't ask me, I'm still on the fence about Carla Zora sometimes. But she chose her job, she has to live with it. Anyway, I'm gonna head to the gulp and poke around until either the Lorthrak shows up or I get bored enough to call it a night. 
Either way, you get to drink bad drinks and send the bill to Miss Maxra. Win-win, right? Alex chuckles and walks back into the front room. You might think differently after you try their drinks. Crag Lane feels old, even in the City of Monsters. A near-forgotten side street worn low from thousands of years of heavy footsteps. The last gulp is about what you'd expect for an ancient dive bar in this part of town. Rough stone brick, uneven windows, piles of rubble along the walls, the smell of industrial waste and kaiju vomit, that has to be especially gnarly. You don't like going into bars in the first place. Too many kaiju vying for space, too much noise, too few answers. The smell of the place alone is almost enough to turn you away. As you approach the doorway, a bulging shape in the corner stands and extends an antlered head. Evening. You touch your forehorns in acknowledgement. They grunt back a sound more heavy machinery than communication. Busy night? They shrug their shoulders and push open the door with their tail, leaving behind a black trail of ink. Not much of a talker, are you? Their eyes narrow and gesture to the door with their antlers. You get the point and ease past into the bar. The interior of the bar is as crude as the exterior, showing its age as one of the city's oldest drink pits. Not despised, just mostly forgotten to the ages. The bar and tables are all stone slabs, probably hewn from the same quarry as the bricks that make up the rest of the building. It's easy to believe that the bar wasn't built, but dug out from the surrounding stone. The bartender watches you enter with one head, and the television mounted above the bar with the other. A small crowd of kaiju sit around various tables on one side as doesn't fit anyone's stools. A couple of them look up for the drinks, but most just keep drinking like this might be their last gulp after all. Trying to look like another worn out monster after a hard night, you make your way to the bar. What'll it be, Slick? You look around the limited drink selection. Alex is right. Everything that doesn't look like it was brewed in a refinery is cheap rot that you could use to remove rust. Makes you glad you don't drink booze. Best to stick with a soda. Hmm. I, I feel like we should go with the, the obvious answer here. The purple can the bartender slides across to you is festooned with pictures of various movie monsters. You can't help yourself but sing part of the advertising jingle under your breath. They drink the mash. They drink the monster mash. It even smells purple. How does it smell purple? You slide a couple of coins across the bar and sit on a stool. The bartender pushes back less change than you'd expect, but you don't comment. You a cop? You're broken from your quiet observations of the bar area, trying to figure out who could be the blackmailer just by appearance. In the movies, they would be hunched in a corner, hat over the eyes, looking shifty. But you're the only one wearing a hat, and everyone here is hunched. What? Most folks come here to drink and don't give a damn about anyone else. You're scoping out the place. If you're a cop, tell me now, so I know who to call if you end up in the alley out back. But if you're thinking of robbing the place, I'll just tear you apart here and now. No hard feelings. That happen often? The bartender shrugs, their one head still not moving from the screen. Not that you'd hear. Kaiju here mostly keeps to themselves. So? Cop or not? Definitely not. You place your private investigator badge on the bar so only the bartender can see it. I like to think of myself as a helping claw when needed. The bartender looks affronted, both heads swiveling around to look you up and down with matching scowls. An iron claw? And you really won't be popular around here. Folks don't like nosy flat pads sticking their muzzle where it don't belong. You don't have to worry about me. I'm only here to find someone. I'm not about to cuff or stomp any of your regulars. Just don't cause trouble in here, got it? Staying right out the front does a good job at dealing with trouble. But I hate having to replace the furniture and clean the mess off the walls when you're done. So watch yourself. No trouble here. Just doing my job as quietly as I can. No stomping intended. 
The bartender nods and turns back to their show. What you watching? Dunno. It's either one of those old human monster movies or a war documentary. Acting is terrible either way. Who's winning? The head not watching the monitor spits into the sink. <laughs> Us. So it's probably just a movie. Their tone tells you everything you need to know. After working with Alex for years, it's become easy to spot those who came back from the war. You were there? They nod ahead. Right near the end. Lied about my brood year, went out, barely came back. Did what I had to do to get a job here. Been working here ever since. Not the worst place to end up. They don't reply. You slowly work through your drink, getting a feel for the place. It's not as bad as you thought, once you block out the smell. The name's Rax, by the way. So who are you looking for? The bartender is still watching the movie, which is now showing a giant kaiju wrecking a power plant that crumbles like cheap wood, which it probably is. Someone named Lorathrak. Know him? Again, the non-committal shrug. Maybe. Most folks don't deal in names here. Not real ones, at least. You sigh and start reaching for your wallet, knowing where this is going. Anything I can do to help you remember? Depends. You any good? At what? Answering vague questions? I'm fucking great at it. Try me, ask another. One head laughs and the other growls. Wise arse. I'd wash that muzzle around here if you like your teeth. I mean, you any good as a detective, and you know it. You give a variation of their non-committal shrug while the dogs bark just outside your house while you're trying to record a video. Very rude of them. I've ended a few marriages and found my share of lost pets. Need something looked into? They pierce the top of another can with a pincer and hand it to you. I got something for you. Not now, though. You got a card or something? You hand over your last business card. They glance at it skeptically. Oh, you're the one Alex works for. You know Alex? Long story, don't ask. He comes in sometimes for a drink. They pocket the card in their apron and nod to a table off to the back of the bar. Laura's over there. You can't miss him. The indicated table holds a single occupant. Squat, spiky, and drinking like they're prepared to go on drinking forever. One of my best and worst customers. Drinks all night, never tips, never says thanks. Some fucking gratitude wouldn't go amiss. Ever spit in his drink? Both mouths grin widely. Every fucking night. Tried to stiff me on the tab one night. Then try to screw with a two head. We don't forget and can spit twice as hard. You pick up your drink and stand up from the bar. I mean never to piss you off. Anyway, look me up when you've got time. I'll help you out if I can. They nod, go back to watching the end of the movie, and you head towards the Occupy table in the back and also get a drink. As you approach the back table, you catch the stink coming from Lorathrak. Dank, musty, alcohol-ridden, the stench of a loner you're all too familiar with. The table before them is littered with empty cups, the bartender obviously not wanting to get any closer than they have to. Lorathrak? They look up, peering up at you over the top of their drink, eyes trying to focus on the poor light. What's it to ya? Whatever you're selling, I don't want any. Just someone looking to have a chat. You look like you could use some company. Laura looks you up and down with a sneer before gazing back down at the drink. I don't want nothing except to be left alone. You pull out the stool opposite and sit down. Well, that's too bad, Laura, because I'd like to talk. Of course you fucking do. You a cop? Can't a kaiju just sit down and share a drink with a stranger? No, I'm not a cop. Just someone in need of a few answers. Lure snarls, finishes their drink, slams the cut back on the table, and waves to the bartender. What kind of questions? The kind that have to do with Maxra. Who? Never heard of him. Never? 
You got smoke in your ears? I don't know him. Funny. She knows you. Says you're saying she owes you some money. The bartender arrives, putting down a fresh cup of something that smells exceedingly flammable. You lean back a little. Laura picks up the cup, downs half of it on one swig, puts it back down. You wonder if it had a little something extra in it. On the shorter side, curvy, wings, little horn on top. That's her. Calls herself Max Renaud, does she? What else did she tell you? She said you were blackmailing her. Said she wants you to leave her alone. Did she show you a blackmail note? Or have any proof that I was doing it? Or what I was supposed to be blackmailing her about? No, she didn't. But you took the case anyway because she looked scared and had the money. Laura grins a filthy, broken-toothed grin. Thought so. She wanted you to come down here, make some trouble for me so I leave her alone, right? Or maybe she wanted you to sort me out good and proper in the alleyway all quiet-like. Something like that. They nod and slug back the rest of the drink. Thought so. You hear is her hired muscle? No. Private detective. Even worse, then. Listen, Flatpad, and listen good. That dame ain't getting blackmailed. Whatever she's mixed up in, I ain't the one causing her grief. Why has she sent me after you, then? Now you're asking the right questions. When I was working with her, she was going by Caesarius. Laura taps the empty cup with a claw. You get the hint and signal the bartender. Doesn't that seem like something you should be asking her about? She's your client, after all. Go home, detective. Go talk to Caesarius. Maxra, whatever she's calling herself now. Just leave me to my drinking. He looks down at the stained tabletop, its surface puddled with rainbow slick residue. And a word of advice, detective. Watch yourself around her. She may look sweet, but those claws are sharp. Getting up from the table, you nod to Rax and make your way out into the Evernight. Stainra eyes you uncaringly as you emerge from the bar. You tip your hat as much as the horns allow and move into the street. So, Detective Karibara, your first night on the case and you've found out what? Maxura has told you little to nothing about this case, despite eagerly retaining your services. Lorathrak hasn't told you anything, except that Maxura is hiding something, obviously not wanting to give anything away. All you know is that there's more going on here than simple blackmail, and you're still on the case. Good thing you're being paid by the day. You can feel your bed calling to you. Best to call it a night, and I'm going to call this an update. I hope you'll join me next time for more, uh, <laughs> monster detective shenanigans. And, uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody.